Hey guys, and welcome back to Castle Crush, and today we are going to be doing another Skull Queen skeleton deck here with the Catapult. Although this time there's one little twist, which is that we are going to be putting a standard bearer in here as well. And this is going to be fairly impactful, so this should be really interesting. And we do have a Black Witch in here too, a Lightning... So we've got some utility to do some different things and not just be completely one-dimensional. And the standard bear, of course, is going to help us dodge dangerous cards, such as, you know, the Executioner or a Mage or a Dragon, and, you know, try to go around those or take out, you know, ranged cards. That might be a problem. So this should be really interesting. And I'm curious to see how it goes. I'm not sure if I might need another... Mana Ritual, or if the Skull King is going to be too much mana, we will see if this is too mana heavy. I can adjust it. And right away, I'm not able to play very much, so maybe it is too mana heavy. And... Decide to not go with the uh, Standard Bearer there, and instead... Yeah, yikes. Straight into that Executioner. I'm going to just go ahead and get the Boneyard in to try and preoccupy them a little bit. And get the Spectre on that Executioner. And it gets rid of the Executioner, which I think is a pretty solid play. And I also know where the Shaman is too, actually. So... Not sure what I thought I was doing there, but uh, I still... Really, well, there's two shamans. Okay. There's two of them, but unfortunately, I couldn't quite get rid of it. I got a little overwhelmed there. Didn't quite register with me that there were two shamans until the end. And again, we'll try the boneyard and see how it works. And does okay. They do a pretty good job of countering it with that jester. But I have these archers at close range, which is really good, because I can quickly get rid of them. Those are a problem card for me a lot of the time, but if I can quickly get rid of them, and then look, there's the utility of the standard bearer to sort of take out ranged cards a little bit. And I'm in good shape here. I have the Spectre up. I have a Black Witch in my pocket. And I have the Catapult as well to set up. Now they set up there, so I go ahead and counter that with a lightning. And I still have a good advantage here. I did the Skeleton's Legion, mostly so I'd have some cover to put the catapult in the bottom lane if I wanted. But also, yeah, to synergize with the Skull Queen. I guess I didn't really need to even do the catapult. And yeah, just ended up really working out there. So what do we got inside of these chests? Anything cool? I'm trying to open up my chests as often as possible because it's always good to have the cards just for donating purposes, of course. Even if I don't get anything super duper crazy, which I do not hear. Would be nice to pull another legendary on video. I have pulled some on my ult off of videos, but I think I'll probably get another one on here eventually. They tend to happen when I am least expecting it, so I just try and make sure I'm actually recording. That was a sweet move right there, except it ended up... <laughs> they ended up hitting the golem instead of the, uh... Die. Instead of the, uh, Siege Ballista. So, now, this is a problem, but I, I can definitely see here, I'm like, yeah, it's a Black Feels Witch like type of play but they get rid of it, and I can see this is about to be a real big issue, so I'm going to see if I can out-DPS them. Because I really don't have anything to counter what they have in the bottom lane with. So I'm like, I'm just going to block and hope that the Reaper doesn't break through, but I'm kind of afraid it is. I think yeah, the Reaper got me. Dang. I just had no cards to really counter that with. Not many Reaper counters in this deck, unfortunately. But it's also not a card I really ran into that much while playing with this either, so I guess I felt like I didn't really need to have a Reaper counter. I mean, the biggest one I had was really Black Witch, but in that last match, they kind of got me, so... 
Again, really like the Boneyard just because of the positioning it gives. That's always been my big thing with it. Even more so than Synergy with the uh, Spectre or the Skull Queen is really just the positioning because it lets me play cards uh, really close to some of their cards, like getting that Spectre played really fairly close to the Mage. And then, really interesting with Skeletons and Skull Queen is that the Skeletons can actually take out a Phoenix at close range before the Phoenix can take them out. And look at that move there. Unprotected Catapult, but I just knew they would be focused on the uh, middle lane because it's, those cards are, like, right there. And the Spectre looked dangerous, so I was like, they probably won't be able to deal with both lanes, and they weren't. So that ends up working out in my favor. So this person starts off with a very aggressive attack on my castle and I just get in there to try and get rid of that genie as fast as possible. And then I decide to double down on the bottom lane because I see an opportunity uh, there with the skeletons whereas I didn't really have any way to get rid of the jester. Skeletons against jester, I mean it's not the best matchup really. So I wanted to take the win where I can get it, and the Jester doesn't really do that much damage. It only does 100 damage per hit, so not that urgent to get rid of. Although I do eventually clean that up as well. Now they've got the Ice Elemental that had to go because it would be uh, making a lane pretty much unusable otherwise. So... Skeletons, very good against Mud Elemental at least, and I see a chance to get another Spectre down, and I'm very happy to have these Spectres in position, although the middle lane looks kind of strange there, the Ice Elemental again needs to go, that's a card that I recognize as a counter to what I'm doing, although part of me is like, well, I can sort of just go behind the Ice Elemental, so maybe it isn't the end of the world, do I really need that lane? So in the end, I decided to just ignore the middle lane and try to out damage them in the other two lanes given the cards I have and I don't really have any good way. I'm like, well, maybe I could push back middle lane and then use Black Witch, but I decide to try and out damage them. Oh, actually here I, I do try to do the Black Witch move a little bit. I don't think I needed the skeletons, but I tried that anyways. Um... And it ends up actually working out for me. And 203. So yeah, I basically did need to counter in the middle lane. And then look at that move with the standard bear to clear the way. And blocking uh, bottom lane with the catapult. I think I could have just played the catapult in the top lane and won for sure. But I was in panic mode. So again, these ice elementals were a problem. I was trying to work very carefully to eliminate them because they definitely were a problematic card. The biggest thing for me in this match was I should have focused more heavily, I think, on the uh, Hollow Knights, although that, that um, Spike Statue was a big issue. And then here you can see I tried to go in for the Black Witch, but unfortunately they countered it. Which meant I, you know, I was trying to think what I should do. Should I play Lightning on the Hollow Knight? Um, I ended up using Lightning on the Ice Elemental because I really no other way to get rid of that card. And I used Skeleton's Legion because I thought I could get rid of the Shaman. And I kind of missed an opportunity, honestly, to get turn around that Hollow Knight. And in hindsight, I think I should have focused on that more than the uh, the Black Knight because it didn't. I didn't even get rid of the Black Knight anyway, so probably should have focused more on turning middle lane because I think that would have been more helpful. But I don't know. They kind of just had momentum once they had the uh, dragon out there, and yeah, there were just too many things at the end there to deal with. So. The dragon, I pretty much have very few counters to except the Black Witch, so that's kind of what I have to do there. In this match, I luckily have some good counters in my hand to that Valkyrie. And I decide to put down the Black Witch, of course, then they play the dragon, and I'm like, oh no. So, 
trying to figure out what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to counter with the Spectre based on the cards in my hand. And luckily there are enough skeletons out there to pull us off, so I decide to focus on Dragon rather than the Mage. Initially, and then now I can go back to focusing on the Mage since it is also a problem card for my skeletons. I'm going to kind of have to realize where my priorities are, and again, the Jester isn't doing that much damage to my castle. So, kind of like a Dwarf, it's like, well, I'll just ignore it for the time being. And, managed to get rid of the Black Knight, which was big. So, middle lane is remaining where the problems are. And I just stick a Spectre in there, and Skeletons are going to do the rest. Or will they? Close, but the catapult just in time. What a match we had there. That was uh, quite intense. So now let's open up the victory chest and see what we can pull from this. And what are we going to get out of here? I was just quickly checking. Uh, my profile real quick i couldn't remember how many wins i had and um there we go we got a gem capsule which i don't really use but whatever so here's a very interesting match this match was a huge i really just put this in this is a quick match but i put it in because it's a huge example of just how you know how well this deck can just dunk people like, watch this. They have a very, very powerful stack coming along here. And you can see what happens. It's just, you know, just totally shut them down. That's like all of their strategy right there just gone. And um, no real counter to that. Of course, that was mostly a deck that didn't really seem to have the right counters in general. Um... And I didn't know what else to play there, so I just was like, we're just going to go with the standard bear, and I'm going to make something happen. And I managed to get the the angel in front of the Hollow Knight, which was pretty hilariously genius. And then I was able to eliminate the angel, but of course they have another one. Of course, they're just going to have another one, like, right there ready to go. So I decide once they use that gust of wind, I pretty much decide I'm going to go straight at them here and just kind of ignore the Hollow Knight until I had the angel removed and then now I could safely uh, attack the Hollow Knight and turn it around or try to. They do heal it but I decide I'm going to use the lightning. And I do, in fact, get it turned around. They put another one out there, but it's clearly turning into my favor. And I smartly move right over with the standard bear and take out the storm elemental and the angel. Very clutch plays there. And Black Witch in the bottom lane while they're distracted. Oh my gosh. Those are some critical, crucial plays. And then I basically one hit that ice elemental in the top lane, despite the fact that it was just melee cards. I mean, that was impressive too. And then they're, get, they're getting the top lane back, but it doesn't matter because I had the finisher cards ready to go. So that was pretty awesome stuff, I thought, right there. That was a very interesting deck, especially with a standard bearer. It provides so much extra sort of a fun element to this deck so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and leave a like if you did in fact enjoy um maybe subscribe if you're new to the channel and for more mobile gaming content and leave a comment as well if you had any other additional ideas for videos i should do and thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned for more videos.